octoronal fury below us. I mean, at least they're not on stage beating us up, which happened, well, at least to the singer fairly often. But on this evening, for the most part, they're leaving me alone. They're putting their cigarettes out on the floor, not in my leg, which happened a lot. Anyway, so the youth are doing their thing, and they're leaving us alone because all we want to do is play the 80 songs on the set list. And at one point, this big man clambers up on stage. And, and he's like a footballer, like a big, you know, heavy guy, thick neck, black military haircut, green trench coat and green army boots. And he starts taking these laps around the stage, like he's gaining momentum, like the end of a bolo. <laughs> and we all like, give him room. You know, you don't want to get run over by this thing. So I got my ankles up against the drum riser, and this guy's going, <laughs> and he flies off the stage arms spread like a bird going out and as you know gravity catches up and he goes out and then straight down now he's going straight down onto hundreds of people below him these are veteran concert goers and they see the ambient light over his head differentiate slightly and they understand that they are about to be landed upon by something what it is does not matter because you do not have time to look up and evaluate the incoming object. You just have time to move. And so none of them look up. They just see the light change and they scatter with incredible speed. It was almost electric. <laughs> Gone, leaving this semi-circular ragged island of barren dance floors punctuated by one mere mortal girl right in the center who didn't get the memo. And she gets a nanosecond of time to look around and basically say, hey, where did everyone, where? And this huge man lands on her with the entirety of his body weight and he is face down, arms and legs spread, the flaps of his trench coat out like wings. He is not moving. We cannot see the girl. Is he underneath her or has she been turned into an aerosol? Is her blood and bone and brain matter in a mist in the air against the wall and in your, like, oh! Is that, is that, is what happened? Who, no one knows because you can't see her. They could be dead. And the band stops, the audience, everyone's like, whoa. Because there's this island of dance floor and this man face down. And finally, some people get on one side like, <clears throat> and they roll the big fat bastard off. And there's the girl underneath, on her back, looking straight up, her eyes unfixed like a doll's. Her mouth is open, she's breathing spasmodically. <clears throat> Reptilian brain has taken over. She has no memory of this. It's how you drown. Your body says breathe, but you're breathing water. It's like a hiccup or a sneeze or a vomiting. You can't control it. It just happens. So the body says, we got this. We're going to get you through. You're knocked out, but we're going to make you live. So, and they pick her up and shake her. The eyes focus. She gets her balance. You see that she's back with us. And she raises her hand and waves unsteadily, like she just got thrown from a bull at, at some kind of a bull NASCAR event in America. And she waves and everyone's like, yeah! You guys are like, yeah, hell yeah! You know, survive! And she staggers into the crowd, and the big fat bastard staggers away. And we're just standing there, like looking at the dance hall, you know, come back together again. And there's this odd silence. I'm like, well, wow, that was a. Uh, that was intense. And everyone kind of turns on us like, keep playing! I'm like, right, sorry. And one, two, three. Hey, 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 Anyway. <laughs> so the, the, there's no more events during that show, and we, we moved on. And many months later, we're back in New York yet again, and it's sound check time. And it's like, a, it's like this. It says the box is empty. And we're sound checking. He's this band and crew there. And uh, a young girl walks across the dance floor, comes right up to the stage and looks up at me, and she says, hello. I said, how do you do? She said, um, do you remember me? I said, ah, I'm, I'm sorry, where, where do I remember you from? She said, remember the last time you guys played here? A guy jumped off, oh, like, oh, oh, are you the girl that landed on by the big fat bastard? She said, yeah, I am. I said, damn, I saw it from here. I saw him go out and then down. I saw you go, hey, 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 whew. I mean, I thought you died. I mean, I'm so glad you're alive. Like when you walked away, that was awesome. And I forget which eye she referenced, but she held her hand up to one of her eyes and she said, well, I'm not that okay. And she uh, looked at, you know, showed me one of her eyes and said, this is a glass eye. He knocked my eye out. And that's a big thing to take in. You know, you're just standing there uh, on stage with no one there and she lays this incredibly awful news on you. And I'm sorry, 
doesn't really cut it. Uh, we'll put you on the guest list, doesn't really replace a human eye. In fact, there's nothing I can do that puts her eye back in her head, uh, you know, six months later. And I think the whole band basically said their own version of all, I'm really sorry. Because that's really all you can say at, at such a later point. And I forget exactly what I said. You know, some version of, oh, no, I'm so sorry. But I'll never forget what she said. She said, don't worry about it. It's cool. I'll see you tonight. And she turned around and walked out. And to my knowledge, I have never seen her or met her again in my life. And it gives credence to that thing your mother always told you about, everything being fun and games until someone loses an eye. <laughs> or, you know, don't, don't pick that up, you'll lose an eye. Don't do that, you'll lose an eye. Get your hands off your brother, you'll lose an eye. And you know, his eyes come out all the time in the world of a mother. And you know, in the guy's defense, and it's kind of hard to defend this guy, but if you think about it, I, I bet you he did not go to the venue that night thinking, I'm hunting for some eyeball. <laughs> I mean, I don't think that was on his mind, right? I, I think he just went to the gig and did what a lot of people did in those days. And I bet if you told him after and he found out, I bet his response wouldn't be, so, price to do business. I, I bet he'd be fairly mortified. And I, I would not want to be that person walking around with that for the rest of my life, because that's got to catch up with you over and over and over again. You forget about it for a while, and then in some quiet moment sitting somewhere, you remember, yeah, I did that to a, a, a girl all those years ago, and she's walking around the earth uh, with one eye because of me. And what if you become a parent, and your, your son or daughter comes up and basically says, Dad, tell me how not to be a schmuck. And you have to say, well, you know, don't do what I did. You know, don't, don't be irresponsible and, and tear a girl's eye out of her head because you're going to walk this earth for the rest of your life and it's going to catch up with you in the, in the quiet moments like it does to me. Now, you know, go punch your mother in the ribs or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> Advice people give to kids, obviously. But it was one of those wake me up and make me grow up moments that came a lot in those days. You know, in very crude fashion, you hear these, you know, these hard stories. And it, I don't know what to do about that, in that, what do you say to the audience that night? All right, everyone, be careful! We don't want to lose any eyeballs! I mean, I don't know how else to comport myself on stage. I don't know how to make uh, eye safety part of the show by anything I say or do. You know, watch out for other people's eyes. It's an odd thing to say between songs. And I don't know if it's going to make anyone enjoy the gig differently. Like, I don't know. It was one of those, like, moments where I realized that we young people, we were not unbreakable, and, you know, that things could happen to us, because some of you are at an age where you keep looking at your face every year in the mirror, and it just doesn't change. In fact, you start looking better and better and better, and you see old geezers on the street, and you wonder how they screwed it up, like how that guy turned into, like, that old bastard. I mean, he must have got it wrong, because that's never going to happen to me. I mean, look at me. I have such a wealth of life and youth that that'll just, I'll never turn into that. And so when you're young, it's unbelievable that you can't live on sex, dental floss, and noodles, and 40 hours of sleep a year. Because the world is yours, and you, you can really hold on to it. And then later on in life, the, your grip, you have to be more artful than strong, because your strength seems to diminish. So you have to hold on to life more gracefully and with a bit more humor. Well, you'll see. And it was one of those moments where I went, wow, I, we are breakable, you know, and, and I don't know what to do about that. And, and so that... That happened, and around the summer of 1980, 